In this podcast episode, Dr. Victor Carrion, a leading expert in child psychology, explores the complexities of stress and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, in children. He discusses the nature of PTSD, the impact of cortisol on mental health, the overlap with ADHD, and the importance of personalized coping strategies. Additionally, Dr. Carrion emphasizes the significance of active listening, resilience, and the role of mindfulness in promoting emotional well-being among children and adolescents. Dr. Victor Carrion delves into the complexities of stress and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, particularly focusing on their implications for children. He emphasizes that stress exists on a spectrum, ranging from beneficial to harmful, and can be categorized into short-term and long-term stress. While some stress can enhance performance, excessive stress can lead to negative outcomes, including PTSD. Carrion highlights that PTSD can manifest in children who may not meet formal diagnostic criteria but still experience functional impairments, underscoring the importance of understanding stressors and their effects on mental health. Carrion explains that PTSD can arise from a single traumatic event or accumulate from multiple stressors over time. Children are particularly vulnerable due to their developing brains, which are more plastic and susceptible to the effects of trauma. He argues against the notion that children are inherently resilient, stating that they require support and tools to develop resilience. While early stress can help children develop coping mechanisms, overprotection can hinder their ability to manage stress effectively. The relationship between PTSD and avoidance behaviors is another critical area of discussion. Carrion notes that avoidance can complicate recovery, leading to issues such as substance abuse, and self-injurious behaviors. He emphasizes that PTSD feeds on avoidance and confronting trauma is essential for healing. The phenomenon of perseveration, where individuals ruminate on their trauma without structured support, can exacerbate symptoms. Carrion also addresses transgenerational trauma, where trauma experienced by one generation can affect subsequent generations. While the genetic transmission of trauma is still being studied, he explains that the behaviors and coping mechanisms learned from traumatized parents can influence their children. Understanding both the narrative and potential genetic aspects of transgenerational trauma is crucial for effective intervention. Cortisol, a hormone associated with stress, is another focal point of the discussion. Carrion explains that in healthy individuals, cortisol levels follow a natural rhythm, peaking in the morning and tapering off throughout the day. However, children with PTSD often exhibit elevated cortisol levels at night, which can interfere with sleep and exacerbate symptoms. He notes that interventions aimed at reducing evening cortisol levels have been explored but have not yielded significant results. Carrion discusses the impact of cortisol on brain development, particularly in areas related to memory and emotional regulation. The effects of trauma on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis can lead to dysregulation of cortisol, affecting brain function and development. He highlights the need for further research on the relationship between cortisol levels and PTSD symptoms in children. The overlap between PTSD and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, is another important topic. Carrion notes that children with PTSD may be misdiagnosed with ADHD due to symptoms such as hypervigilance and inattentiveness. While ADHD is characterized by persistent hyperactivity, children with PTSD may exhibit hyperarousal only in response to specific triggers. This distinction is crucial for accurate diagnosis and treatment. Carrion emphasizes the importance of understanding cues and triggers associated with PTSD. Cues can be neutral stimuli that become associated with traumatic experiences, leading to hyperarousal or avoidance responses. Identifying these cues can help individuals understand their reactions and develop coping strategies. While it may not be possible to identify all triggers, recognizing a few can foster self-forgiveness and facilitate recovery. In the podcast, Carrion discusses the complexities of post-traumatic stress injury, PTSI, and its relationship with the autonomic nervous system, particularly in children. He describes the autonomic nervous system as a seesaw, where the sympathetic fight-or-flight and parasympathetic rest-and-digest systems interact. PTSI can create a disruption in this balance, leading to either hyperarousal or dissociation. 
This understanding can help individuals feel less stigmatized, framing PTSI as a biological injury rather than a mental disorder. Carrion highlights the critical role of sleep in recalibrating the autonomic nervous system. Good sleep is essential for psychological well-being, and he credits Dr. Matthew Walker for raising awareness about the importance of sleep in mental health. Sleep helps strengthen the immune system and supports overall health, making it a vital component of recovery from trauma. Carry On focuses on the treatment of PTSD in school-aged children, explaining that different age groups respond differently to trauma and treatment. His work primarily involves school-aged children, where he has observed the impact of cortisol on brain development, particularly in the hippocampus, which is crucial for memory processing. He discusses the use of functional imaging to study brain activity in children with PTSD symptoms, noting that those with higher cortisol levels show less activation in key brain areas. To address these issues, Carry On developed cue-centered therapy, which focuses on helping children identify cues and triggers related to their trauma. This therapy empowers children by teaching them about their experiences and the impact of trauma while providing coping strategies. The therapy is multimodal, incorporating elements of cognitive behavioral therapy, self-efficacy, and insight-oriented work. Carry On emphasizes the importance of creating a personalized toolbox of coping strategies for each child. This toolbox includes various techniques such as deep breathing, mindfulness, and positive thinking. He encourages children to practice these tools even when they are not in a stress response, as this helps them build resilience and prepares them for future challenges. He introduces the concept of a four-corner square system to help children understand their responses to stress. The four corners represent what they are thinking, feeling emotionally, feeling physically, and what actions they are taking. This framework allows children to dissect their responses and identify alternative actions. By focusing on one corner, children can create new responses and expand their options for coping with stress. Carry On discusses the importance of agency and control in managing stress. He highlights that having a sense of control over one's responses can significantly reduce anxiety. He draws parallels between this concept and deliberate cold exposure, such as cold showers, which can help individuals explore their stress responses in a controlled manner. The practice of cold exposure can teach individuals about their physiological reactions and help them develop coping strategies. The toolbox approach is designed to be flexible and adaptable, allowing children to customize their coping strategies based on their individual needs. Carrion emphasizes that the goal is for children to internalize these tools and use them independently in their daily lives. By empowering children to identify their cues and develop their own coping mechanisms, they can better manage their stress and trauma responses. In the podcast, Dr. Carrion discusses various tools and strategies for addressing trauma, particularly in children and young adults. One of the key tools mentioned is the creating space technique, which involves using a feelings thermometer to help individuals identify and articulate their emotions. This tool encourages self-awareness and emotional regulation, allowing individuals to analyze their feelings and responses in different situations. The analyzing four corners method is also introduced, which helps individuals explore their thoughts and feelings from multiple perspectives, fostering a deeper understanding of their emotional states. The conversation shifts to the impact of social media on mental health, particularly among children and adults. Dr. Carrion emphasizes the importance of setting boundaries around social media use to mitigate its negative effects. While social media can serve as a valuable tool for connection, it can also lead to emotional dysregulation and unhealthy comparisons. Establishing clear boundaries, such as designated phone-free times during family meals, is crucial for promoting healthier interactions and fostering mindfulness. Dr. Carrion discusses the implementation of a yoga and mindfulness curriculum in schools, particularly in underserved areas like East Palo Alto. He shares insights from a program that introduced yoga and mindfulness practices into classrooms, highlighting the positive outcomes observed in students, including improved mood and increased sleep duration. The curriculum was designed to be accessible, 
allowing students to participate in yoga without needing special clothing or equipment. The program aimed to empower teachers to integrate these practices into their daily routines, thereby enhancing the overall well-being of students. The discussion continues with the challenges of implementing mindfulness programs on a larger scale. Dr. Carrion identifies several barriers, including a lack of resources, insufficient training for teachers, and the need for systemic changes within educational institutions. He advocates for prioritizing mental health and wellness in school curricula, emphasizing that teachers require support and training to effectively implement these programs. The importance of community involvement and advocacy is also highlighted, as parents and community members can play a vital role in pushing for these initiatives. Dr. Carrion addresses the need to redefine success in the context of education and personal development. He argues that the current societal focus on extreme performance and individual achievement can be detrimental, particularly for those who may not excel in traditional metrics of success. Instead, he advocates for a broader understanding of success that includes belonging, community engagement, and personal growth. This shift in perspective can help individuals find value in diverse experiences and foster resilience. The concept of resilience is explored in depth, with Dr. Carrion explaining that resilience is not merely about bouncing back from adversity, but also about adapting and growing from experiences. He emphasizes the role of supportive relationships and the presence of caring adults in fostering resilience in children. The discussion also touches on the biological aspects of resilience, with Dr. Carrion collaborating with researchers to study the genetic and epigenetic factors that contribute to resilience. This research involves using organoids, miniature brain models grown in the lab, to investigate how exposure to stress affects neuronal development and function. Dr. Carrion's work aims to bridge the gap between biological research and practical interventions for mental health. By understanding the underlying mechanisms of resilience and stress response, he hopes to develop more effective treatments and preventive measures for individuals at risk of PTSD and other mental health challenges. The integration of mindfulness practices and trauma-informed care in educational settings is seen as a crucial step toward promoting mental well-being and resilience in future generations. Carry On discusses the importance of effective communication and active listening, particularly in the context of interactions with children and adults. He emphasizes that listening is not merely about hearing words, but involves understanding emotions, intentions, and the underlying messages being conveyed. Carry On highlights the differences in communication styles between children and adults. He notes that children often express themselves in more straightforward and sometimes raw ways, which can be refreshing but also challenging for adults who may be accustomed to more nuanced conversations. He encourages adults to approach conversations with children with an open mind and a willingness to engage without preconceived notions. This approach fosters a safe environment where children feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and feelings. Carry On addresses the common pitfalls adults face when listening to children. Adults often interrupt or redirect conversations based on their own experiences or biases, which can lead to children feeling unheard or dismissed. He advocates for patience and the practice of asking open-ended questions that encourage children to elaborate on their thoughts. This technique enhances understanding and empowers children to express themselves more fully.